Australia's koalas need your help, and it couldn't be easier. If you spot one of these iconic marsupials in the wild, snap a photo and submit it. It's time for the CSIRO's Great Koala Count, just in time for National Science Week. But why is it important for you to get involved? Koalas are one of those animals, everybody knows what a koala looks like. If somebody sees a koala, they'll recognise it. Uh, the challenge is they're actually really hard to count. The Great Koala Count is really a citizen science focused effort to get as many people out there recording and collecting information on koalas as possible. That enables us to take that information and bring it into the National Koala Monitoring Program, which can help us provide the best possible estimates we can for how many koalas there are in the country, but also where koalas are distributed at the moment. Koalas within New South Wales, ACT and Queensland are actually listed as endangered. So the, the populations there we know have been declining quite significantly in recent years and there is a lot of action to help um, recover and restore those populations. In Victoria and South Australia, while they're not listed, there is still limited amounts of information about what is happening to those populations. So the real goal of the Great Koala Count and the National Koala Monitoring Program is to provide that or help provide that data-driven um, approach to understanding koala populations nationally. And that's for a number of different reasons. So koalas are really hard to observe in the wild. So you may be walking through an area and there could be a koala sleeping up in a tree and you wouldn't even notice it. They're quite unassuming um, out in the bush. At the same time, the populations are also spread across a really large area of Australia. So they occur everywhere from North Queensland around the Atherton region, right down the East Coast and along the Southern Coast to the Eyre Peninsula in South Australia. So it's a huge part of the Australian landmass that they cover, which, you know, combining those two things, they're really hard to find in the bush and they cover a really wide area. And actually getting an accurate estimate on populations is quite a hard thing to do. Some of the major ones are habitat degradation and loss. So loss of the forests and the trees in which the koalas live. Uh, other impacts are for areas where humans and koalas come into contact quite often. They can be hit, quite, hit by cars. Uh, quite frequently. So everybody pictures koalas sitting up in trees, but what people don't realize is that, that at night, to move between trees, they can come down out of the tree and walk along the ground. And if there's a road there, then they need to cross that road and they can get hit by cars quite easily. Other, other areas where there, again, where there's um, koala populations interacting with humans a lot, things like people's dogs can attack and, and bite those koalas, which can injure and, and kill them. Uh, the other really big threat for koala populations is disease. So on top of all these other pressures that koala populations are undergoing, there's also things like chlamydia that can affect the population. And as animals and populations get stressed, they can that chlamydia can cause more and more issues to, to their reproductive success as well as other health indicators. The goal of the Great Koala Count and the National Koala Monitoring Program as a whole is to take that um, large amount of information that citizen scientists can collect and contribute into the program and fuse that with other sources of information that we're collecting alongside that to give us the best estimates we can for koala populations nationally. Once we've got really good estimates of what's happening with koala populations and where they are, then that enables the decision makers to make the right decision to protect those populations. Jump onto the um, Apple Store or the Google Play Store Download the Koala Spotter app. That's the primary app that we, um, we've developed for citizen scientists to record koala observations when they see them. And then just get out there and have a look for, look for koalas. If you see one, pull out your, koala, pull out your phone, get your Koala Spotter app, app out, record that location. And if you want, take a photo, send a photo to us. There's a number of other questions you can answer. The more questions that you answer within the app, the, the richer that information is for us and the, the more it supports koala conservation. And these citizen science approaches really enable us to have you know, huge numbers of eyes looking for koalas, recording information and bringing them back to our scientists to allow us to better understand um, what's happening to koala populations and for other citizen science approaches as well, um, conservation biodiversity in general. The National Koala Monitoring Program has been established to create that data-driven approach to koala um, decision making. So it's really about getting the best available information and using the best technology and analytics to um, provide data to decision makers to help them conserve koalas. Thank you so much for joining us. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe so you can get even more Australian Geographic goodness.